Hey guys. guys, welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, my name is Alexis and I am from the US. And I am Louis and I am Swiss. And together we make all kinds of videos about living, but more specifically about traveling in Switzerland. So if that sounds interesting or helpful to you, click that subscribe button to stick <laughs> around. So if you click this video, that means you are likely headed to Switzerland and are interested in booking a train pass, which that means you're a savvy traveler and you're interested in saving some money. <laughs> so that's already great. If you've watched our channel for a while, you may have realized we already have a video on this subject, but unfortunately, since making that video just last year, there have been a lot of shakeups and changes mm -hmm. to the passes. So we want to give you the most relevant information. So we're making a new one here for 2023. So if that sounds like you, let's get into it. So I'm going to start with the Swiss travel pass. This is the most well-known pass in Switzerland. This pass allows you to travel all around Switzerland by train, buses and boats mostly for a number of days that varies from 3, 4, 6, 8 or 15 days. In terms of price, it's going to vary for 3 days for 232 francs to for 15 days 429 francs. The longer you stay, the best it is in terms of cost per day. So that's also something to keep in mind if you're going to be here longer. This makes it even more attractive to you. And you also have a possibility to have the Swiss Travel Pass Flex, which is within a certain amount of time you can pick the days that you're going to use it. For me the price gets too expensive compared to another option that is just getting some saver day passes and we'll get into the video as well on these saver day passes so I just disregard the flex option. In terms of the area validity it covers all Switzerland it also covers the panoramic trains like the Bonina Express or the Glacier Express so what it covers is all the SVB trains so all the normal trains that you're going to take it also covers all the boats and this is a great money saver in Switzerland to be able to go on boats is also a very nice experience as part of the trains you can also get these panoramic trains being the Golden Pass line or the Glacier Express or Bonina Express trains you have some seat reservation to add to it sometimes but it also covers local transit so if you are going to stay maybe a day or two in a city you're going to be able to take these public transportations in Zurich these trams buses in these different cities so that's also a great value to add to the pass and lastly if you are a museum enthusiast it covers 500 museums in Switzerland and that's also pretty expensive if you don't have this so that's also something nice to consider in the Swiss Trial Pass. So a few other points on the Swiss Trial Pass that are also pretty advantageous so for families that have children below 16 it's going to be covered actually these children if they are going with their parents you just have on the website to add these family cards and the names of your children that are under 16 and it's going to be free for them which is a great money saver actually rather than other passes where you have to to pay some uh, pretty substantial amount of money and last thing you still have things of course that are not covered with the Swiss Royal Pass all the mountain trains and gondolas are not covered you'll have 50% of these ones so this is still something to keep in mind you'll have to show your Swiss Royal Pass when you get there to get the discount when you buy the tickets but this is not covered in the Swiss Travel Pass, except for a few, for example, the Rigi Kulm, the Stoß, or the Stanzeron are some that are covered with the Swiss Travel Pass. So if you still have questions about the Swiss Travel Pass, exactly what it covers, exactly kind of different trains, hard to get into all of that in a video that's like this, which is covering <laughs> everything, but we have a full video about the Swiss Travel Pass that I'll link here and in the description if that sounds like a pass that you're interested in. Now moving on to a pass that's probably a little bit easier to explain. It's a bit more straightforward. That is the half air card. So first things first, what is a half fare card? The half fare card is something that is available that does what it sounds like. It gives you half off all of the train tickets in mm -hmm. Switzerland. So this will be 120 francs and that is valid for one month. I'll pause here and say a lot of you ask me questions about it because it looks like there's two different half fare cards. The 120 <laughs> francs one is specifically for tourists. It is valid for one month. There is also an option for a year, but that is for Swiss residents only. So you can disregard that if that's what you see on the internet, but the correct links will be in the description. So what does this 120 francs get you? This will be a card that is essentially like a coupon on all of the trains. So unlike the Swiss travel pass, this does not act as your ticket. You need a ticket additionally to this. You need one half fare card per person. I get mm -hmm. that question as well. You can't use it for a family. Each adult will need one half fare 
Tarot card, it'll be tied to your name. And with that, whenever you buy tickets, either online or at those SBB terminals, there will be an option to purchase it at one half reduced fare. So this option will be on the trains, it'll be on the buses, it'll be on local transit. So you will just purchase your reduced fare ticket. So how does this work? When you're on the trains and you get controlled, someone will look at your ticket. If your ticket says it's one half, they will also ask to see and scan your half fare card. So you will need one per person. It will be tied to your name. So everybody will need to have a half fare card that has a half fare ticket. So really simple way to think about this is that it just functions as a coupon. So who is this good for? We recommend this predominantly for travelers that will be in Switzerland for a longer period of time. As a Swiss travel pass is a great value if you have consolidated travel in a few days. This option is better if you're going to be in Switzerland for a longer period of time. So the Swiss travel pass, the max maximum amount of days you can have is 15. This pass at baseline is valid for one month. So if you plan on being in Switzerland for up to a month, a few weeks, or if you have non-consecutive travel days and they're kind of all around and you're traveling, you know, maybe bopping around doing a road trip or something and you're going to be doing gondolas, this is an option to consider. If you're wondering if you're going to break even, the simplest way to do this is as you're looking at the tickets you're going to be purchasing, if they're in excess kind of of 240 francs, you'll likely break even with this pass. One other perk with this card, like Louis had mentioned with the Swiss travel pass, with the half fare card, you can also get that Swiss family card yeah. as well. So everyone in Switzerland, if you are six and under, has free public transportation. Mm -hmm. But with the family card, that goes up until 16. Exactly. So as long as there is an adult with the half fare card that is valid and the Swiss family card, which is free of charge, you can have free travel up to 16 as long as they are accompanied by an adult. So that's a nice yeah. perk if you have a family traveling that's a little bit older than six years old. Exactly. Another option that I really like actually is the same day pass. These can be booked on the SBB app or website in advance. These allow you to sort of mimic what you would get with the Swiss travel pass in terms of accessibility all over Switzerland on all the trains, but you can get some pretty good discounts on these day passes. So you can book up to two months in advance and I really recommend going as, as far in advance as possible. You can book them on the SBB app or on the SBB website and you'll have the same area of validity as a Swiss travel pass. It will not act as a half fare card in itself. So it's good to combine maybe with a half fare card if you're going to do a few, but then you can go all over Switzerland. So I like it very much because it gives you that flexibility. You're not just stuck with one train, you're stuck with one day, but you know that you're going to go all over for, for that day anyway. So you have that flexibility and the discount part, which can be pretty good. And so I think you can kind of mimic the Swiss travel pass flex with the saver day passes say okay you want to travel on Saturday and then on Monday and Wednesday you can go for three save a day pass and save quite a lot of money in terms of cost it can get as low as 39 francs I think so this is really a great value so the next pass that has a full Switzerland validity will be the URL pass and then after this we'll go into the regional specific yep. passes but the last pass we're going to talk about in the full Switzerland validity is the URL pass and that mm -hmm. actually has validity even beyond and the reason I think this is a good option to discuss is because I know that many of you when you're traveling a long ways to Switzerland, maybe you're coming from outside Europe, I know many of you are, you're looking at visiting more of Europe than just Switzerland. So you're going to be traveling around a lot of that by train. And for that case, URL is a really good option for that. So what is the URL pass? The URL pass has access to the rail lines of 33 countries across much of Europe. So ranging from the United Kingdom into Western Europe, Southern Europe, a little bit of Central and Eastern Europe as well. So you have access to a huge railway yeah. network, Switzerland included. So this pass is a great value if you really plan on traveling all across Europe. So mm -hmm. since we're a Switzerland focused channel, we'll talk about Switzerland particularly. There's a few things I like about this pass and there's a few things that might be cons depending on the type of travel you're doing. So the first thing is, like I mentioned and like the name indicates, this is called the Eurail Pass. So with this pass is predominantly rail lines. Yeah. So the public transit within Switzerland, within cities, it won't be included. So for example, if you're getting on a bus or a tram in Zurich or in Bern or Geneva or something like that that's outside of the rail mm -hmm. network. Likewise, boats are typically not included. There are some exceptions to this, but boats are typically mm -hmm. outside of this. And what's also typically outside of this are those gondolas and funiculars as well. So this pass has more of a 
city focus, I would say. So if you're doing a lot of city travel, this pass is a really, really good option for yeah. you, especially if you're going to be outside of Switzerland. So this pass is a little bit more flexible than the Swiss travel pass at baseline because you purchase a certain amount of days within a month. Mm -hmm. So you can start from four days within a month and the cost for that is 281 US dollars. So at that, it's roughly comparable to the Swiss travel pass, except you have a wider validity outside of Switzerland, a smaller validity inside of Switzerland. Yeah. So it's good to know depending on what travel you're doing. Museums are not included in this. We get mm -hmm. questions about that <laughs> a lot. This is really just specific to railway transit. If you have more questions, if this has piqued your interest, you'll notice we have a lot of specific videos. Mm -hmm. We have the URL video yeah. here. It's specifically focused on the URL in Switzerland and we compare it a lot to the Swiss travel pass. So check that out if this sounds like something you're interested in, if your travels are taking you beyond Switzerland's borders. So that is it for the passes that cover all of Switzerland. Now, I know a lot of you come to Switzerland and spend time in specific areas, whether that be around Lucerne or around Interlaken. The next section is particularly about regional focused passes. So if you don't wanna watch through the rest of the video, you know I'm traveling all throughout Switzerland. The first set of passes applies. Now, if you wanna continue on with us, we're gonna be talking about regional specific passes, which can give you a lot of bang for your buck, particularly if you're focused in your travels. So the first regional pass we're going to talk about is our dear Berner Oberland pass. We really like it and we talked about it in other videos. This is a great pass if you are going to be traveling mostly in the region of Interlaken and be there as a base for a few days. This pass is great because it covers quite a big area of validity. It ranges from Bern to Lucerne, so you can go there between these two cities and of course in Interlaken by train, but it also covers boats, buses, all the trains in the regions, all the mountain gondolas, mountain trains are covered in the Berner Oberland Pass. It also gives you some discounts if you want to go to the top of Europe, the Jungfrauer and the Schildhorn. These two are not covered in any passes, but you'll have some, uh, some good discounts when you want to go to these two places. In terms of the number of days, you can purchase it three, four, six, eight or 10 days. And the prices range from 230 to above 300. And I always recommend if you are going to go really mostly in the Oberland region to get a half fare card and the Bonne Oberland Pass, you're going to break even your half fare card very quickly and then you'll have also some discounts on the trains that take you maybe from Geneva or Zurich. So that's a good combination I always recommend people. Uh, if you have kids up to 16, this is really, really good because this is going to be flat 30 francs no matter how many days and they'll have access to everything just for 30 francs. So if that pass sounds interesting to you and you'd like to learn more, we have a video about all of the interlocking passes here. Mm -hmm. The reason we're doing this video also is the top of Europe pass does not exist anymore and that was our other favorite pass in the region. We're not going to talk about the Jungfrau travel pass. You can look it up if you'd like. I think the Jungfrau yeah. travel pass is almost like the Berner Oberland pass, but quite a bit more limited. And the pricing is, is too similar in my opinion to be worth it. Yeah. So because none of these passes include the Jungfrau Yuck anymore, I think that pass is totally devalued. So in our opinion, we don't even really talk about the Jungfrau travel pass because I think it just kind of confuses it. There are already so many amazing options. Mm -hmm. So the next regional pass will be in the beautiful region of Lucerne, which I know many, many of you love. We love it as well. This pass is called the Tell Pass for William Tell. He is from this region. And the Tell Pass includes everything around the region of Lucerne. So mm -hmm. there are some very different, but also beautiful mountains that are covered in this pass. So I know a lot of you focus on the Jungfrau region. This region is also amazing as well. So within the Tell Pass, you can go around the Lucerne region, but the mountains that are included are the Titlis, so Engelberg and Titlis. I know a lot of you love this mountain and ask about it. You can go to the Pilatus, the Rigi, the Stanzerhorn. There's a a lot of beautiful mountains mm -hmm. in this part of the Alps. You have access to all of the boats on Lake Lucerne, which yeah. are absolutely beautiful. You have access to many, many of these mountains in the area mm -hmm. and all of the trains in the Lucerne region as well. So if you're going to be staying in Lucerne as a base, this is a pass I'd recommend you check out. This pass actually starts at two days, so you can consider that from 190 francs and goes up to 10 days for 320 francs. So the prices range between that for second class. Similar to the Berner Oberland Pass, kids are a flat 
that 30 francs in case it goes great thing. Yeah. up to 16, which is a great thing. This pass does not compound with the half fare card. So mm -hmm. if you have the half fare card, you do not get a discount on this pass, but we think it's pretty reasonable if you're going to be doing a lot of these mountains. And the fact that it starts from two days, most of these passes start from three days. That's something to consider also if you'll be in Lucerne for a couple of days. So if Lucerne sounds like where you're headed, check out this pass. Yeah. It's a little bit less marketed and under the radar, but can be a great value if you're going to be in this part of the Alps. And the last pass we are going to talk about is if you are going to the Swiss French part of Switzerland, if you're going to have as a base Geneva, Lausanne, Montreux, this is the Le Mans Alp Pass. This is kind of a weird pass because it includes also all the trains in the region and some cool mountains around if you want to go to the Rocher de Main or the Glacier 3000. This is something that is included and you have two options, either five days or seven days. Within these two options, you'll have either two days that are fully covered and then three days that have a 50% discount, kind of act like a half air card. So do not combine a half air card with this pass. If you're just going to stay for a few days in the region, it might make sense. Or for the seven days, it's three full days. So just the, the three days you're going to go to the different mountains and then four days where you're going to maybe just take a few trains around in the region you'll have to take a ticket. You can only get these passes in the different train stations. So that's something to keep in mind. Maybe if the tourism board in the region sees us, maybe you can put it out there right on the internet. That might be easier, but that's still a pass to consider, I think. And that is good in around the Le Mans or the Lake Geneva region. Yeah, so if you're going to visit Montreux and Geneva and be around Lake mm -hmm. Geneva, there's a lot of beautiful destinations. I think this pass, I think it's a little bit of a shame because it's so confusing. <laughs> I think you have to do a little bit of math. I'll have the marketing on the screen for the way it's sold and the fact that you can only buy it in the train stations I know also mm -hmm. can add a little bit of stress or uncertainty to the trip as well. So I do want to mention it because this pass is a great value if you are really focused in this region. So putting it out there, you can get it in the train stations. Yeah. And if this works for you, it can save you quite a bit of money. So if you've made it to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that this helped you make a decision yeah. and didn't confuse you further because that is not our goal. <laughs> if you are looking to buy the Swiss Travel Pass or the Burner Overland Pass, we have links in the description. Just so you guys know, these are affiliate links. We get a little yeah. bit of a commission, but that just helps us to help you make more content and the pass you get is exactly the same. Yeah. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If you feel like you need more help, Louie offers one-on-one -on -one travel consultations. <laughs> if you just want us to plan your trip for you and you just want to use an itinerary, we've already created. We offer those for sale on our website as well, but that is it for us. We will catch you in the next one. Bye guys. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.